Hi folks, I'm Liam Barry. Welcome to Alcan ADV. Today we're going to go into the camping and cooking side of things as it pertains to motorcycle travel and uh, how I'm going to be preparing for my trip. Anyway, we'll get into that right after this. <laughs> So we'll start out with cooking gear. Uh, unlike a lot of other motorcycle related topics, I do have some experience in camping and so uh, I feel a little more qualified to talk about this than, uh, you know, like what tires you should pick or whatever. Alright, uh, we'll go over these pots um, and what I've got and what I'll be taking. Uh, this is the uh, Svea 123 system, just the pot. I've, I've used this for a little while. It works fairly well, but I don't want to use aluminum for that long, so that, that's not going. Uh, this is a Coleman basic stainless steel. has a little, you know, skillet, and the pot has this really beefy, heavy handle on it. Um, and I've got, let's see, here's a uh, little alcohol stove that I made years ago. Um, wet fire. If you guys don't know about wet fire, this is a, it's a great little fire starter. It's kind of a, a tinder thing. You shave it off and, uh, and it burns forever and ever. And this thing is just really heavy, so I didn't really want to take it. Uh, it's also unwieldy and it doesn't really stay together very well. This is a tea kettle that I got a while ago. Uh, GSI Outdoors. It's anodized aluminum, so it won't, uh, the anodization process keeps the aluminum from, you know, spewing whatever terrible stuff into your food and uh, it pours well, the edge is sharp here so it doesn't dribble uh, and all in all I really like it. If I need to take a second pot on the trip, um, this may be what I take. This is what I'm going to be taking as my main, uh, main cook set on the trip. This is a Stanley uh, stainless steel pot. I got this at Walmart. It's about $25. It has a little handle with a vent and straining holes and uh, we'll see what I've got in here. I hope this thing's recording. This is a uh, windscreen, just heavy duty tin foil, doubled over a few times and you can kind of, you know, take it and set it up. It's a little bit uh, precarious when you're using it, especially in high wind, but you know what? It works and it's cheap. This is a Vargo Titanium Sport, and I have found this to be the best sport um, on the market that I have tried. It's, it's light, it's titanium. Uh, the shape of the bowl and the shape of the tines are, are just right. A lot of sporks, the tines get too deep and, uh, and the fork works fine, but you can't scoop anything because it drains out. Uh, and then other sporks, the tines are just little tiny wimpy things up here and the spoon is alright but you can't stab anything to save your life. And this seems to be a really nice combination of the two, plus it feels really good in your hand. Oh, pardon the cuckoo clock. And that brings us to my stove. This is the uh, MSR Micro Rocket. Basically they, they went from a pocket rocket to a micro rocket to a pocket rocket 2 which is almost identical to the micro rocket. I, I can't find any differences. Anyway, this is a canister stove so it screws on there and uh, and there you go. You put your pot on top and light this. Uh, micro rocket comes with a little piezoelectric uh, igniter and then it folds up all nice and compact. There you go. So the other thing I've got for this stove is uh, this. This is a base. For the stove. One thing a lot of people say about these is uh, they're so top heavy. You know, you got the canister, then you got the stove. Pretty soon your pot's sitting up here like a foot in the air. And uh, this thing really helps with that. This is MSR. I know uh, Jet Boil makes one that's plastic. Uh, they both work. But you put your uh, canister in here, and then you've got a big old base on it. And uh, this is very stable. It won't blow over, and uh, works really, really well. Anyway, so I would, I would highly recommend one of these if you're going with a canister stove. I make these little stuff sacks out of ripstop nylon, uh, and I've got some other odd junk in here. There's a, this is another spoon, long in case you want to like get down to your bottom of your mountain house. Um, this is a little pack towel, uh, like, a, like a microfiber towel, uh, useful. Can't be without Scotch-Brite scratchy pads. Oh, this is a knife sharpening stone. 
more soap or soap at all, I guess. Um, and these are more stuff sacks. I got a little orange one, a couple of yellow ones. I think this is the one that I use for my pot. Basically, it just sits there. And then uh, this can go in on top of it if I needed to. So I've got that, and there's my cooking setup. Now, there's two things this does not have in it. Uh, one, I have to get a little cutting board. I'm going to get a little thin um, plastic cutting board. And then also, I'm thinking about getting another pot. Um, probably not a pot, but more of a skillet pan type thing. Something about this big. Uh, I know there's a company called Frybake that uh, there's a skillet that's like, you know, big and then a little one. I might look at a little Frybake. Uh, but that's just a possibility and you know I could go with what I've got here and be just fine. Alright, a couple of other things uh, related but different. This is a water purifier. This is the Sawyer Squeeze filter. Uh, very popular with hikers and backpackers. And the thing with these are this will actually thread right to a smart water bottle. So what you can do is you can fill your water bottle up and uh, screw this onto it and then put the bottle cap on top of this and you can just drink right out of it and uh, a lot of the hikers do that now the other thing is this comes with a uh, you know bag so where you know one's one's dirty and one's clean anyway that's what i'm going to be taking as a, a water filter purification there's viruses and bacteria and uh, protozoa and usually things filters will take out protozoa and bacteria but viruses are very small and they're hard to take out uh, this filter will take out all three viruses included, um, but you have to check for that when you're buying a filter. So that ends the uh, kitchen discussion, and uh, now we'll move on to camping, the, the actual sleeping gear. This is my tent. This is the uh, Arit ASL2 REI tent. Um, I did my research on this tent. This is a three season tent that uh, it's got geodesic pull design to where it'll stand a lot of wind. I wanted that. And uh, it's a two-man, so I have a little extra room. This is uh, going to be my sleeping pad. Probably rolled a little tighter than this, hopefully. Uh, this is a Thermarest. Um, not sure what the model. Base camp, recreation, whatever. So this is a 20-inch uh, Thermarest inflatable mattress. And uh, I've liked these a lot. I've slept a whole lot on the ground on this thing, and uh, it works really well. And my sleeping bag. This is a Golite. Golite is a company that is now defunct, uh, turned into, I think, My Trail Company. It's a 20-degree bag. This bag, I can, I can stay warm if I need to, and then if you really get hot, you just open it up. I've slept in the lower 48 uh, in this bag quite a bit, even inside, and uh, it's all right. If you get hot, you just open it up and lay on top. This is a hammock, cheap Grand Trunk, uh, $20 hammock uh, that I bought and customized. I've put a bug net in it, and I've got lines for it here. This is, well, there's some more in here. Anyway, this goes along with like an 8x10 or a 10x12 tarp that I've got uh, and put special grommets in to where, just where I want it. Uh, anyway, this is going along, the tarp's going along, and if I ever want to camp out that way, uh, and hopefully if I have trees, uh, that'll be an option as well. And a little announcement here. Uh, I am now officially on the path to becoming a pilot, uh, adding to my already busy schedule that is six weeks before I leave. Uh, I'm also going to ground school, and so uh, we'll see. I'm, I'm fairly well versed in the aviation industry uh, already, and so hopefully I'll be able to plug away at this and uh, get that certificate before I leave, uh, hopefully become a student pilot uh, before I leave, so that's great. Well, that's all I've got for you guys today. If you guys got something else to add to this, I would love to hear from you in the comments. Uh, I know a lot of you guys have uh, good motorcycle travel and camping experience, and, and I'd love to hear what you think. Anyhow, I uh, hope to be doing some more riding, and maybe we'll get a little riding video up uh, here in the next couple of weeks. And uh, until then, you guys ride safe, and uh, we'll see you next week.